yet one more lecture, lecture number 15 of this course, Industrial Wastewater Treatment. Okay. So, today we will discuss about manufacturing process, use of water and sources of wastewater along with characteristics of wastewater for yet one more agro-based industry and that is dairy. Now, question may come how dairy is agro-based industry. So, dairy use milk as raw material and milk is given by milky animal and basically they are raised at dairy farms. Okay, but these animals they need the uh, vegetation as the food. So, there is no direct connection of dairy and agricultural yet because the animal which are uh, giving milk which is processed at dairy, they need vegetation as food. So, this industry is labeled as agro-based industry. So, basically dairy farm produces milk and at dairy, this milk is processed and various products of human consumption like milk, butter, cheese, yogurt, curd, milk powder, baby food, even special milk product like paneer, ghee, unique to India, mava, khava, which are used for varieties of sweets. They are produced at this dairies. Okay. So, let us look at the manufacturing process. The milk collected is brought to dairy either through milk cans or through milk can tankers. Now, these cans or tankers, they are taken first at receiving station and from each can or tanker before milk is accepted, it is tested for foul smell and how it appears. If it is spoiled, then straight away it is rejected, it is separated and if it is good, then only it is emptied into receiving ten. Either cans are emptied or the tanker is uh, emptied in the receiving tank. Now, you all are aware that milk is perishable. If it is not preserved at low temperature, it will spoil. So, the first thing done is the received milk is subjected to cooling. So, the possibility of milk getting spoil is minimized and then the entire quantity of received milk is subjected to process known as pasteurization. Now, pasteurization is method or process of heating milk to high temperature followed by sudden chilling. So, there are various methods of this pasteurization and the temperature of heating is different. The duration of heating is different, but in all the processes after heating, the milk is brought to very low temperature suddenly that is around 4 degree Celsius. So, this pasteurization process ensures that all bacteria present in milk, they are deactivated. So, you can increase the shelf life or storage time for the milk. So, pasteurized milk requires more time to get spoiled. So, it is uh, 
storing life is increased because of the process. So, this pasteurized milk is then sent to different section in dairy for manufacturing of different products. So, the very important product of dairy is milk, pasteurized milk. So, after fat adjustment, the pasteurized milk is packed in different volume and then it is sent to uh, storage and distribution center from where people can buy. The very important product of most of the dairy is butter. So, for the butter, the milk is taken to creamery where cream is separated from the milk. Now, milk without cream is known as skimmed milk and this skimmed milk either can be sold or you can use it to recover milk powder. The cream separated is then processed further with the culture and then subjected to butter making. So, butter making involves process known as churning and after churning the butter is separated from the liquid. The liquid remaining we call it buttermilk which is waste. Some of the cream separated in creamery is subjected for ghee making and there is no liquid waste in this process but some solids may be generated. So, skim milk also no liquid waste, milk powder everything is evaporated and you get solids. One more product of dairy is cheese. So, how cheese is made? Let us look at it. The milk is taken to cheese making section special culture of bacteria is added and this is done in cheese vats. So, the unit where cheese is made, the bacterial culture is introduced and then the cheese is allowed to ripen. So, various time required depend upon the type of cheese produced. So, bacterial culture is different and time required for cheese ripening is different and during this process the solids cheese which is solid is separated from the liquid and the liquid residue from the cheese process is known as whey w h e y whey there is also important liquid waste some of the milk can be taken up for manufacturing of condensed milk where the moisture is moisture content of milk is reduced and sweeteners are added. This is used in various sweet making and there are other product like as I said ice cream or shrikhan or paneer or kava. So, these are the various products of dairy. Okay. Now, let us look at the water consumption. Right. So, depend upon the scale of the dairy, how much milk it process, what kind of products are manufactured, then specific processes employed at that dairy, type of equipment used and management philosophy. All these factors influence the water consumption. Main Use of water for dairy includes washing and rinsing. Now, this is single largest consumption purpose. It is normal practice to clean all the cans, tankers, each and every equipment, pipes, floors once the processing of milk is over. So, for at the end of every batch, all these areas, all the equipment, they are clean. Plus, 
lot of water is needed for cooling as well as refrigeration system because milk has to be preserved at low temperature and even all the milk products they are also require preservation at low temperature so huge water is required for cooling and refrigeration system as well as uh, for boiler to produce steam for pasteurization okay so the sources of waste includes receiving station that is rejected milk cleaning of cans tanker cheese making process way washing area where uh, equipment and uh, cans and all they are washed with hot water acids alkalis detergent and steam then water softening plant for steam production butter making the main wastewater butter milk washing of floor and then steam condensate and cooling water so it is normally estimated that about 6 to 10 liter of wastewater is generated per liter of milk is processed so imagine a dairy processing about 5000 liters of milk then it can produce about 30000 liter minimum of wastewater so huge quantity of wastewater is generated in dairy okay now pause the video and think what are the characteristics of this wastewater what are impurities present in this wastewater which is generated from dairy okay so you might have thought about impurities like total suspended solids total dissolved solids organic matter inorganic matter organic matter which is biodegradable and some organic which is not biodegradable so yes you are right it is estimated that about 2% of milk processed reaches to grain as wastewater so the wastewater also has characteristics like that of milk here on your screen you can see characteristics of wastewater BOD5 at 20 degrees Celsius it is in the range of 1000 to 1200 milligram per liter COD 1800 milligram per liter total suspended solids in the range of 600 to 800 milligram per liter and oil and grease in the range of 200 to 900 milligram per liter so you can say that wastewater from dairy it is characterized by high BOD high TSS and very high oil and grease content and at the same time it does not contain any hazardous material okay so the lesson we will conclude here and in the next lesson that is lesson number 16 we will focus on treatment as well as byproduct recovery from wastewater of dairy industry thanks everyone